Hi and welcome also from my side. So I'm Andrew Schreiner, product manager in the Thinature project. And uh, before I start, I'm also pleased to announce uh, to this community that uh, Ruben Miller has joined us as the product owner for the project. We are very lucky to have him as he has deep expertise in the area of agent development and IoT device management. And now together with Ruben, I will share more uh, about the new things we have added to the 0.8 release, uh, which is already out and give you some a little bit of background information. So now for people who are new to ThinEdge, I always like to start with a short intro on ThinEdge IO, so what it is and why we're developing it. Um, so in very short, ThinEdge is the open source and platform agnostic glue between your OT devices and IoT or cloud platforms. So our initiative is focused on solving the problem of connectivity and device management of resource constrained devices like PLC gateways and uh, industrial uh, equipment. Uh, we are providing ready to use modular components that allow you to, uh, you know, out of the box secure connectivity of devices to IoT platforms and cloud comprehensive firmware and software management and monitoring. So this is especially relevant for all the devices and hardware in the operational technology and automation space. So we are able to transform those, you know, very constrained single purpose resource constrained devices um, into, you know, additional deployment options for uh, IoT applications and logic. Now, while technically all of this sounds great, I also wanted to give you uh, some, you know, uh, ideas on how our users are already leveraging or starting to leverage ThinEdge. So we have partners who are using ThinEdge on gateways to increase the, for example, energy efficiency in buildings or in the uh, production systems, which is a very relevant topic at the moment, especially because of the exploding energy prices. So here are, you know, MQTT interfaces, the messaging mechanisms are used to exchange telemetry, telemetry data from, you know, energy meters. Uh, you can, you know, also do things like remote configurations of the gateway itself or protocols um, like Modbus or Mbus, which are used in, in the domain. We also have partners who leverage ThinEdge on uh, devices like PLC gateways or soft PLCs are emerging the uh, type of devices that are coming now. So here ThinEdge acts as the bridge, as the foundation for all types of cloud connectivity, IoT device management functionality. So it's a, it's a, it's a good foundation to build and expand on uh, because it's very lightweight and uh, efficient enough and secure enough to run on devices that are really limited um, in the resources that they have. And also we are getting started uh, uh, in use cases around, uh, you know, things like wind energy, uh, to be able to monitor things like wind farms or wind turbines, and again, unify the zoo of different protocols and devices that are used uh, in such environments. Now, let me just continue. Uh, last but not least, I also wanted to share, before I hand over to, to Ruben on more details, uh, I wanted to share some highlights from this year on what we have done and where you could find ThinEdge under the hood uh, or on things like conferences. So we have, you know, uh, great partners like Kunbus or Nexus or FM who did a great job supporting and promoting the project. So we had a first representation of ThinEdge uh, uh, based on some partner solutions on the SPS trade fair. We also just uh, recently done a cool uh, hackathon organized by Kunbus. Um, and you can see some some impressions here. So really, ThinEdge becomes people are becoming aware uh, of ThinEdge, and there are also first articles and and communities mentioning it. Um, so we are also getting attention and consideration from big industrial IT consortiums like the Open Industry 4.0 Alliance, and working closely with partners like, for example, Neuron Automation on the next generation of PLC engineering industrial automation. So ThinEdge is is very uh, broadly used in in very use cases and we are very optimistic to continue to grow um, our community, our visibility in the next year and we would welcome you to, to try it and also help us and join forces with us. So now handing over to Ruben. Thanks Andre for the introduction. So my name is Ruben Miller. I'm the new product owner for the Thin Edge. So I'm really excited to be able to join the team and I'm hoping I can also deliver um, to the success of the team and build upon the very strong basis that we already have. 
um, and bring it forward to make a really great product in the end, which helps solve everyone's uh, use cases. So that being said, I want to kind of start off with showing basically what our vision is again, because also me joining you, I think it's a good time for a bit of a refreshment. So FinEdge is a framework which delivers kind of like the building blocks to be able to then present or like to solve your kind of problems on your devices to solve your use cases. So what better analogy to use is then Lego, at least that's how we say it in Australia. Um, so you can think of the building blocks that you can kind of assemble them together to build your solution. But then the first kind of instance, you might think, wait a second, I mean, how big or small are these building blocks going to be? Because if there's also, you need a thousand blocks to build your kind of your solution, that's also not ideal. However, you don't want to be at so big building blocks that you become so inflexible. So when I talk about building blocks that we want to provide by FinEdge itself, we're talking about kind of like functional building blocks. So if we look at from the device management aspect, for example, so look at the, the software, configuration, firmware, telemetry, and stuff like that. And not always looking at the device management aspect, but also like connectivity, looking at the cloud and the reliable communication, uh, also in potentially unreliable networks like mobile networks. So what we really want to provide is these kind of easy to use blocks that you can either choose or not use at your choosing. So you can build great products. Like if you want to build a Millennium Falcon, by all means, you can build that. But we can't have the building blocks too large because then if you walk away from this use case of I want a Millennium Falcon, then you know that's not going to fit for everyone's use case. So maybe you want a race car. So we try to look at the commonalities that we can then provide to different people of the community to then reuse in their use cases. Because in the end, you're always going to have some proprietary knowledge. So we want you guys to focus on your really value add, which is proprietary knowledge there and not kind of like the standard features like software management, configuration management, which are all kind of standard delivery part of the product. But they add us a lot of noise and a lot of implementation effort required there. So by also pushing kind of like the open source aspect of all of this, you can actually then benefit from each of the contributors in the open source community. So if you have like a reusable wheel that is great for you and you're going, well, there's no real like super proprietary knowledge there. So maybe if I contribute to that, to the community, someone else can use it and they'll contribute something there. And then you can kind of um, have a free flowing um, kind of pool of ideas and components and plugins that you can really push your product forward to make some really nice uh, products, which also minimize the maintenance that you need. Because if you're developing all these individual agents, then you know you don't get any benefit. So if you have like developers leave, then the development stagnates. Whereas if you have a community, you have a bit more of averaging out of like contributors. So it makes you a little bit more robust to let's say personnel turnover or anything in the company. So now part of the building blocks that we also deliver um, I think one thing that's really important, and a lot of people also forget, is not only the building blocks itself, but it's also the tooling surrounding the building blocks. So for example, that's uh, for people that don't know, that's a Lego block separator. So that enables, to makes it easier to, you know, pull parts across um, from blocks and put it somewhere else. Um, so we wanna also deliver first class tooling surrounding the blocks. So whether that's from packaging tooling, or um, just kind of like best practices or like through the documentation, we really wanna add a really good experience because that can also influence how it's then used by each of the people. So moving on to the kind of the focus areas. Um, so for the 0 to 8 release, so we're building always upon all of the existing functionality. As you can see here, we have a lot of kind of different aspects of the project. So whether it's from like the IoT mappers, so you can customize to whatever IoT provider that you want to use, um, to all of the configuration aspect and device management, um, and also like the first class kind of Mosquito bro or MQTT broker um, to allow that facilitate pluggability of different kind of item or components to communicate with each other. So part of the focus areas that we had was continuing on in the kind of the centralized functionality. Um, so doing the over-the-air updates of FinEdge and its components, 
And also a kind of highlight is the configuration management for child devices. Then as we, because we're in a community, we also have a lot of community um, engagements going on at the moment. So uh, there was development for a plugin, uh, sorry, Modbus plugin, which will be showed later on. Um, but that's also a great example because the Modbus plugin can actually reuse other plugins like for the configuration manager. So the Modbus plugin can really focus on Modbus. So you don't need to worry about the configuration aspect. It's really easy to, mon uh, to manage that to existing. And so it's the implementation effort is reduced 50% at least, and you can still get self-updating and all of these kind of components. So you can really provide a feature rich plugin um, that really then focuses um, on, on the Modbus stuff and slimline or streamlines kind of your implementation. Then the next, um, we had the further uh, the furtherment of the Yocto integration journey. Um, so we added some kind of build instructions or a community member added the build instructions, how to build your own custom Yocto images. So where this is really interesting and it's kind of building on the, the fundamentals for the future is when we start to look at the operating system updates or the firmware updates, then this is kind of a precursor. So you need to then be able to create your own images. So then you can deploy them to the devices. So I'd really recommend reading through the Yocto integration to have kind of like uh, get your feet wet to get comfortable building images, because that's going to lay the groundwork for the future and nice future features. So focusing on the release highlights, so on top of the, the normal kind of improvements that we're always doing uh, to Affinage, uh, the two kind of highlights that we wanted to, to focus on was the over-the-air updates. So as mentioned before, that's really concentrating on making it easy to update ThinEdge itself and all of its related components. So whether that's you know the ThinEdge mapper um, or the agent or whatever, so updating all of those components. And so we've enabled that to be updatable from the cloud. So this is a fantastic feature because previously, yes, we always supported updating, but you'd have to run the get thin edge IO shell script. That always assumed that you had access to the device, which in a development scenario might be the case. But if we look at the real kind of production um, environments, usually you don't have like a easy to access SSH because you can't publish the public IP or whatever. So this enables, uh, enables you to update each of the components itself um, via the cloud. And for example, if you're using Comelocity, that means that you can actually update all the components exactly how you would update any other software on the device through Comelocity. So it really adds a streamlined interface and uniform interface that you don't need to train additional operators. So if they're already comfortable with updating other software, you don't need to say special training to update thin edge components. It's a seamless experience. And obviously being able to self update has a strong influence on how quick can you use the new features from a future version of thin edge. And so because we're bringing out nice features all the time, uh, this makes this upgrade path then seamless. Then I would say one of the key or like the, the premium feature that we added and put a lot of work into was the continuation of the child device story by adding configuration management. So with child devices, we already support like the measurements, events, alarms associated with that and the operations. But here we really added the abstraction level of the configuration management. So again, we're adding a building block, which is then to take the hard things away to implement. So we do all the cloud connection stuff, don't worry, and make a very easy to use interface then on the device side that then you can connect all of those devices in your IoT setup. Because usually, you know, you're not just talking about one device, you'll be a device which is then in the local network, and maybe that's a gateway device like you have on the right hand side. And then it's usually a number of devices which are interconnected. And these could be existing devices or new devices. Um, so it's really important that you have the ability there to be adaptable how you communicate with these devices. So I have a, um, a demo of that later on. Um, but again, with the tooling, it's really important also so we don't just deliver a product like a, a feature and say, here you go. We really want to focus on, well, let's do a reference implementation to really show you how easy it is. So it's not just me uh, saying it's easy 
so you, you should always be looking at you know the code that is produced and so that's why we're providing also a reference implementation just so you can see um, how simple it is to implement and providing that it's not about ease but it's also um, being flexible so we can be adapt to your needs So as normal, you can reach out to us um, at any point in time using our Discord channel um, via email. And obviously, because we're open source and hosted the source codes on GitHub, um, we're always open to new ideas or like feature requests. Um, please feel to reach out at any time. So thanks for listening and back to you, Phil. Excellent. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, Ruben. So I've got a, a question. A question here, Ruben and Andre. Um, so if I just read out the questions, so are there any reference implementations based on .NET, so C Sharp, uh, that yeah. the team can have a look at? So currently, nothing that I know of. Um, however, I think the key with some of our interfaces that we look to do, um, we don't really mind what language you use, because we always realize that for a lot of the extensions, so, I mean, whilst the core is written in Rust, we don't expect people to write extensions in Rust um, because everyone has their strengths or maybe have different kind of resources that you can leverage. Um, so a lot of our interface, you can, if you're building like a binary and it's like a CLI interface, we use the standard kind of exit code zero as everything's okay and not. For example, for the um, software management plugins, so you can actually write that very easily. And it's just a, I think they call it a console app in C Sharp. Um, and if you want a bit more of like a, a service-based plugin, um, then you really just need the capability that you communicate with MQTT. Um, and so that's, I believe that Payo probably has their MQTT library on C-sharp, um, that it should be fairly straightforward. So no exact implementation of C-sharp, but there's nothing specific that would then discourage people from using C-sharp, except for I would only just put the onus, I would go for a .NET, six or seven, something that can run on Linux, um, just as a hint. Brilliant. Thanks, Ruben. 